You just let me know. Okay, you got it. Okay, Q. So, uh, what's up? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, um, what heroes you like to play? What's your current MMR? Um, oh, man. Okay. Those sort so, of things. Uh, current MMR is about <clears throat> 1900 solo. Uh, can't quite seem to get to that 2K, man. It's just mm-hmm. it's super far. Um, heroes I like to play, you... According to your videos, you hate the suggestion, but I, I like to do Invoker mid a lot. Okay. I know it's not like a low-level hero. You're going to recommend probably like a Viper or something simple. I, I don't know. I just kind of... Yep. I like it. Um, I was also experimenting with some Wraith King uh, carry and a little bit of Doom, but I'm not sure how to play him. That's what I've been doing lately. Okay. I like Wraith King and Doom. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't agree with the Invoker. Um, yeah, I... I actually picked the Wraith King just because you mentioned that in one of your previous videos. You're like, do something stupid, simple, like Jug or Wraith King just to learn the game. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Yeah, it's really important. And I'm not going to like go through my entire lecture that I usually do since you said you watch my videos. But Yeah, I've, um, I've heard them. Yeah, it, it's just like Invoker has so many distracting things that don't actually matter. Um, like you need to know how to spell combo on Invoker properly to even play him up to par. Like not even just like... Um, you know, be a good invoker. It's like, okay, to actually exist in the game of Dota 2, you need to know invoker spell combos and, like, how to engage on people. And, like, yeah. you need to position really, really well. Whereas, like, if you play Lina, you just, like, you stun, and then you press all your buttons at once, and, like, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I actually, I do a shitload of Lina, too. It just got kind of... Oh, cool. Boring, but how do I, uh, how do I link you my Dota bot? Uh, in Skype, so you just go to the top right and click on the little chat bubble. Got it. It's like the that least happens. intuitive thing possible, but it's there. I installed Skype just for this, so I, I never use it. Um, As you should, honestly, you shouldn't. It's not good software. <laughs> I just like it for the screen sharing. Um, cool. Yeah, but okay. So, um, and then I have, uh, I have a general question. I mean, unless you want to start to get into stuff, but I have oh, a no, minor question. Um, so, when is it worth going and finding like a large creep? versus just taking, like, the ranged creep or the catapult or something. Uh, I assume you're talking about Midas. Oh, yeah. Did I not say that? Um, well, I didn't hear it. You might have said it. I could have just, oh. like, <laughs> completely missed it. But, yeah, no problem. Yeah, okay. So, um, when is it worth it? Usually it's worth it if, like, you don't have to go very far. I mean, it's... I'm sure there's actually a formula for it that you could come up with. Like, okay, distance traveled versus um, gold lost or whatever. Um, yeah. It, but I'm not that person to come up with that formula, as you could tell by my fucking example of a formula there. Um, so it's tough to say, but usually it's worth it. Um, you wouldn't want to go from, say, like um, bottom lane all the way to a creep camp by middle um, just I guess to do the that. More, more specifically, like I'm Invoker sitting on a Midas mid, mm-hmm. and the creep waves like right in the river. Do I just jack the ranged creep or do I walk all the way to the large camp and then take that um, well here's a better thing to do if you're exhort then what you can do is you can start pushing the wave with four spirits and I'm, I'm never exhort so that won't apply. okay so here's another reason why I dislike invoker for lower level players is because if you're <laughs> playing exhort invoker without Midas um, then you're doing it wrong and if you're playing Quas Wex invoker with Midas then you're doing that wrong <laughs> so, so that's another thing um, all right okay so but to answer your question, um, it'd be worth it if you can push the wave really quickly, which you could with four spirits, um, and then go just Midas. But it wouldn't really be worth it in most cases if you have to like, you know, slowly right click down the creep wave and just like, you know, plink, 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 plink for like right, you know, right. twenty attacks. Um, but yeah, going to Midas or big creep is usually good. It's a general rule. If you can just like go to the camp by your lane, wherever you are, like whether you're off lane, mid, carry, um, it's usually totally fine. All right. Cool. Okay, so is that uh, the only general question you have? Yeah, that was it. Okay, sure. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Alright, so you do play a lot of Doom. I like that. Um, do you prefer like mid, carry? Mid and or carry. Okay, what I cool. Do. Where do you play Doom out of curiosity? Offline? You know what? The reason I picked Doom is because in, like, the 1.9 shit show, like, mm-hmm. you have no idea. And normally, I have to pick him kind of early, just yeah. because, every, like, the gold will just tick down because no one chooses anything. 
And so sometimes I play him off lane, sometimes I play him safe lane. Uh, I've okay. never taken him mid. And so, like sometimes I I don't get farm with him because we'll just choose like five, you know, whatever. They'll choose four other hard carries. Uh, it just depends, man. Okay. He's just versatile, I don't know. Yeah, he is, no, for sure. I mean, he can even be played as a five support. Like that happened at TI five or six, one of those two. Um, yeah. So it's, it's totally fine to do that. Um, I like that hero for that reason, actually. Um, okay. So, I do want to ask about your activity as well. Um, I'm not going to, like, you know, pry into your personal life or anything, but was this, like, a, a choice to take a break from Dota? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, obviously, that <laughs> doesn't help you get better, but I totally understand that you need time away or whatever. Um, but yeah, okay. So, I do like that you're, like, relatively consistent. You play, like, almost every day. That's good. Um... So yeah, do you have a specific replay that you want to watch? Yeah, all right. So I, I've got. Well, let's we'll talk this through. I got three to choose from. Sure. So uh, one of them was an Invoker game, which you probably won't like, anyways. Um, and then I have two Wraith King games, which I figured you'd be okay with. Uh, one of them, I did pretty well. Um, but we still lost, and another one I did okay, but the other team had like a Medusa, and I couldn't out carry, and it was just kind of a nightmare. But you'll probably, within the first ten minutes, have identified all the shit that I've done wrong that could have won the game anyway. So okay. I don't know; doesn't matter. Yeah, let's watch uh, that Medusa game. That sounds interesting. All right, I'm gonna link you the this thing. Uh, okay, chat bubble. Thank you. So I don't know if I did it in this game, but I normally always do the thing you say where you stay up, where they can't see you, you check all their items. <clears throat> I usually ping out all their items to like to our team. I, I don't mm. know if I did it this game. Of course, it'll be the one that I linked you to that I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's, it, I don't like take points off a report card or whatever. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Okay, so item. So you went MKB because Medusa has evasion. Good. Okay. So, one thing that is like a little concerning is that you don't have a farming item on Wraith King. Um, so, you don't have like a Mjolnir or a Midas or anything like that. Um, yeah. Or Radiance, which is my preferred item. Um, so, this could be part of the reason how you, why you got out carried. Obviously, like you didn't play, you know, up to, you know, fucking TI level carry right so um like there are other reasons as well but um that's one of the simple reasons that you would get out carried by medusa is this hero is good at farming quickly this hero is not really right. um comparatively anyway so that's like the the baseline most simple reason why you got out farmed um that can obviously be like adjusted for if you buy certain items or if you play a certain way um and we'll talk about that in game but um this would have been a really good radiance game actually just because they have three right clickers um, and it also does a lot of, like, it does a, a ton of damage to their supports. Um, I, I pick up Radiance on Wraith Keep sometimes, and I always just get dumpstered, so I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good item for me. But I guess, obviously, it's, like, really specific, and I'm probably taking too long to get it anyways. Yeah, that's the thing, is you have to, like, farm pretty well and, and get it relatively quickly. Um, it It's just a fantastic fucking item. It's so good. Okay. Bye. Okay, so from here on out, you'll never buy Quelling Blade at level one ever. Okay. okay, so can I tell you what I what I've been doing lately instead? Normally, what I'll do is I'll buy Quelling Blade, I'll save the gold, and then just buy the Stout mm -hmm. Shield at the side shop before the first Creep Wave gets there. Still, don't do that. Yeah, no, you should you should do the opposite. You should buy the Stout Shield first. Um, it. If you do what you just said, it's, like, very minor, but it is, like, worse than buying the Stout Shield first. Um, okay. Basically, like, you have a chance of getting auto-attacked in between, like, getting here and here, whether or not there's okay. a hero here or whatever. That's so that's, that's like, the only reason, or the only way I could um, argue against that. Yeah, um, but this yeah. was when I was trying to go for the talent, but more recently I'll just leave the 190 gold, and in the 10 seconds it takes me to walk to the lane, I've got enough right. to buy from the side shop anyways. Okay. So, yeah, that's fine. Um, also, you can get zoned out from the side shop sometimes. Like, uh, if there are people messing around here, yeah. um, it can be hard to, you know, get to this area. So, 
That's just another reason to, why you would do that. And you need right. the stout shield much more than the um, than the cloning blades. So, okay. Um, here. You're playing pretty far back, but that's okay. Um, you're supposed to like run to your lane anyway. Um, I don't. I don't think I would like go to these fights at the bottom rune. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So the part of the reason for this is I think the Nyx or one of them was like promising first blood, like oh god everyone come bottom, we're gonna get mm -hmm. first blood and win, blah blah blah. So I don't usually want to be the dick that goes solo to the other rune and then there's two heroes there and then I don't get it and I didn't help the team. Mm -hmm. But okay, so typically you would just say don't go. I would just say don't go to bottom rune, yeah. Um, All right. So, what is the opportunity cost of going here, and like uh, you know, doing this sort of team team fight thing? Um, like, what are you missing out on in this case? So, in this case, possibly a couple CS if I don't get to lane in time, and yep. or is that the main one? Yeah, that's a big one. It's the CS and XP. Um, in this case, you don't miss the XP. I don't believe. Oh no, you actually do. Oh no, you don't. Okay, cool. So you actually end up getting here. Um, and just in time for getting the XP, which is nice. Uh, but the biggest reason is the um, is the CS and the XP. Like you, you don't missing out on 90 XP or just like uh, even one melee creeps worth uh, can be really, really game losey, like in really silly ways. Like having your opponent get level two faster than you means that you could die. Um, obviously, in this case, you have an invoker, <laughs> which was like the least intimidating hero at level one in the game. Um, right. So you don't have to worry too much. But um, just be it's really important that you get your CS and your XP. Um, and maybe if this is a really high level game, um, you could like give this up and like actually have a plan and go for this, but um, don't do anything fancy. Like part of the, the thing that I preach is like trying to establish a routine um, in your Dota games. Uh, like try to establish um, some sort of routine anyway, not like script out your entire game and just like, you know, do that and follow it closely or whatever. But having like Identifying the, the parts of Dota that are not really chaotic and like sticking to them and just like uh, trying to play around those things like creep patterns um, Okay, creeps always hit the, the middle of the lane at the same time in every lane always doesn't matter um, They always travel at the same speed uh, towers always do the same amount of damage They're always in the same places Roshan's always in the same place like those sorts of things are never change And that's why you should like focus on those things whereas if you look at this team fight like let's just see how wild this could be I don't even like. I, I didn't watch it, so I don't know, like you know, how it actually played out. But I'd imagine there were a couple mistakes, you know, down here, um, to say the least. So Dazzle starts off by initiating with a right click. Um, blah blah blah. Okay, this is all great. Um, so how is a fight gonna start here? It's like somebody's gonna use the CC on another person, or they're gonna miss, or somebody's gonna run at another person. Like there are too many variables here. Um, it, it's like you're you're investing too much time in something that is like totally dependent on your teammates doing a not only good job but like a pretty great job um nyx has to land a stun on somebody who is not cc'd like that's really hard that doesn't make any sense like maybe if you had a, a teammate or a teams or a team of just like five targeted stuns or something um yeah. where you guys just all click your buttons and you know kill somebody that'd be okay maybe but even then um i wouldn't go for something like that usually um basically long story short is i just do the same thing every game um, or I, I preach that you should like try to stick to the same playstyle every game, um, at least at the beginning, like because the beginning is like the only part that matters really. Um, going for these sorts of like early team fight plays is kind of it has a, a pretty high chance of like fucking up your early game, and the early game is the only part of the game that you can rely on in pubs. So I would just do your thing, basically. Um, right. By all means, feel free to experiment. But yeah, that's my my take <laughs> on that. So you walk into lane, uh, get XP for the range creep, which is nice. You should check Invoker's items right away. Um, he doesn't have any regen, which is important. Um, okay. Yeah, comes holy shit. Lane in a couple minutes. Yeah, so a couple things right now. Um, Invoker is making the mistake of not attacking you because he is a range hero and you are not. So he should right. be trading with you right now. You're yeah. making the mistake of being within his attack range, even though you're waiting for this yes. Like... This does not make sense. He's like afraid of you for whatever reason, or he's afraid of hitting you. Um, basically, that, that fear evaporates in about thirty seconds. He okay. Kind of realizes that, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's good. So this should start from like literally the second you walk into lane. Um, he should just start hitting you. 
So that's fine. Um, but you don't want to do this. Like when you're playing melee against ranged, you either want to like posture aggressively, or you want to make it so that you're like constantly dancing out of their attack range. And then whenever you're going for a CS, like you're trying to time it so that okay, I always do that. You're, you're trying to time it so that like okay, rather than standing here, you're back here, and then like as the creep is getting low, you walk in. It's getting low. Then as soon as it it's within the last hit threshold, you arrive and then you hit. Yeah. All right. That's like the ideal play. That way you can minimize the amount of damage you take. Okay. See so here, you, even even just going here to buy your stout shield, you should get punished a little bit. Oh, you're not gonna buy it in time. Okay. Yeah. Disaster. Okay. So this guy's like being very, very, very light on the the harass. Yeah, uh, definitely should be going a little bit more ham on that. But sorry, <laughs> I, don't, I really don't know why he's not hitting you, but it's okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, we can have another stun. Okay. So let's look. So you kind of identify that Invoker's like a little bit out of position. You also know Silencer's coming up, or you might know, maybe you don't, but it's okay. No, I, I, that's um, the whole reason. I saw Silencer coming and I'm like, alright, let's okay. this Cool. So this would be totally fine even if Silencer was not um, on the way, just so you know. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, if Invoker is within your range like this, and you don't have to like, okay, um, let's say you're here, and Invoker is here, like at your max stun range, then it yeah. would be bad. But when Invoker is like like high-fiving you on his way by like going for last hits like okay by all means just send him and, and attack him and like get a trade-off um right. yeah okay so that's totally fine that'd be fine if silencer wasn't there um your inputs were like pretty sloppy though it seems like you were like really uncertain as to what was going on yeah um or as to what you wanted to do anyway so you walk up well i wanted to so part of it is I want to let Silencer get closer before I actually go, but I don't want to like spook him by charging straight at him. But I want to be close yeah. enough so that so that's kind of why I thought I should move that way. But please tell me what I should have done. No, of course. Um, so you're right. You, need, you don't want to spook him right away. But uh, here's plenty of time. Like um, you have plenty of distance here for Silencer to catch up. Um, you'll get two stuns off by the time Invoker is like you know running away. But um, Main thing is, let's like watch your input specifically. So this is your cursor show, being shown right now. Yeah. Okay. So you walk up. I kind of stop here. Um, then you start walking towards Invoker, and you right-click on him, which is good. And you start getting an attack off here. Like you, you saw that your mouse was or your your hero was like making the attack animation. Right. Then you move and then do that again, and then you move, get within auto attack distance, and then right-click, and then cancel it again, and then stun, and then move, and right. then like finally when the stun is about. Let me get like, I think it's like when it's a 75%, uh, when it's like a quarter over basically. Um, yeah, you start hitting, oh no, it's like more than half. Okay, the sun is like more than half over actually, before you get your first attack off, after like five or six attempts at auto attacking. So basically what I'm saying is like, um, this doesn't matter for invoker offlane, but for any actual offlane hero, you might have missed a kill here because you your inputs were so like staggered and, and poor. Um, okay. It's really important that you keep things clean and like just go auto attack. Wait for the animation to like complete, and wait for like the damage to be dealt before you try to input another command. Um, right. You don't have to wait for the backswing of the animation, of course. That's like the whole concept right. behind animation canceling. But um, wait at least until you do the damage if you're gonna right click. Or like um, even better, this is another reason why like playing simple here is so important. Is like know how much time it takes for your combo. Um, so like in in Wraith King's case, his combo is attack, stun, attack. And that's so, like that's his entire combo. So well, I think what I was trying to do was get between him and his exit was my thought, like to sort of like cut up cut off his escape. So you'll see I stun him and then I want to try and get start to get around him mm -hmm. so that he can't just like run away, but maybe I didn't need to do that. Well no, it, that's the right idea. But you could very easily just like stun, attack, and then move, and then attack. Okay. All right. So you put your attack on cooldown, right? Because like, if you stun and then attack, he's still stunned for like half the duration, and you have plenty right. of time to move to the other side and then get another attack off. All so right. no, you had the right idea for sure, but it was just like the execution was pretty wrong. Um, All right. Little stuff like this matters quite a lot though, because this applies to like every kind of fight that you're going to be involved in. Okay. 
So you buy, or you use your salve, totally fine. Tango up. Okay, I stick boots. Should buy stout shield. Really need stout shield. I, I didn't actually mean. To, I don't. I don't know. That was a glitch. I don't have a stick. Oh, that was weird. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, that's fine. You don't need one really. Yeah. Um, it is nice to have one on Wraith King, um, especially against an invoker, who like uses invoke a lot in lane. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is wrong. Also, why did you buy the Gloves of Haste over the Belt of Strength, out of curiosity? Um, I thought I heard you saying in one of your videos that the attack speed was more valuable than the stats at this point. Ah, that might have been in a case where it was like a, a Juggernaut or something like that, who was an Agi hero. Um, in that case, like, buying a Band of Elven skin is nice, but, um, so, or it might have been a case where that carry was just farming. If you're just farming, like, uh, completely free farming, then yeah, the attack speed is a little bit more valuable. But in this case, because you're a strength hero and because you're actively leaning against somebody, you need the HP and the damage from the e belt of strength. Um, it's right. higher value. And so okay. sometimes, yeah. I think the other reason, sometimes I go for Midas off of this instead. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know why I didn't decide to this game. I, Anyways, but yeah. Okay, okay. so... That's fine. Got it. Yep, usually. I mean, if, if you don't want to decide, just buy a belt. It's better. Um, cool. That's fine. All right. So this right here is what I was saying was wrong. Um, what what is the important or what are the important parts of this lane that you need to see? Like, um, if there um, if these were chess pieces, which ones would you want to see? Yeah. Okay. So you're you're talking about my camera positioning being yep. all like jacked up. Yeah. So I don't need to see behind me, obviously. Yeah. I it, want to see further down if someone's rotating, where the invoker's positioned, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most importantly, you want to see the creep HP and invoker and where he is. Um, and in this case, you couldn't even see like the enemy range creep, and you couldn't see Invoker. So right. it's really important that you like keep tabs on this guy so you can position accordingly. Um, okay. You end up taking like 300 damage here from Distress. Um, it was okay. It was like 250, but whatever. Um, it's still a lot. Yeah, it's significant. Is the point. Okay. So this is fine. Uh, just last hitting. Be careful with this right here. So like when you go for this deny, know that. This deny will cost you some HP because these creeps are going to hit you, and a good invoker player will hit you here. Um, right. Honestly, he could have just cold snapped you here. Um, he wouldn't he, go for a kill, but that would have been like a good play. But okay. he's fucking Wexort, so <laughs> he can't cold snap. Okay. Um, Why didn't? Yeah. Unreal. Okay. So this is a, an offline invoker build and a half. Um, okay. So I guess the what best way he could punish you here is like alacrity and then attack you. Uh, yeah. But yeah. He got one right at very quick off, but could have been a little bit worse. But either way, um, still be careful with that. Also could have done it right here. Okay. Basically, just be careful when you're going for denies or, or CS. Like, make sure that, like, you're not going to be tanking a ton of creeps afterward. Or be ready to run away, at least. Alright. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 okay. Like, this is definitely one of those moments. Um... You really forced the CS to happen. Um, it was not low. And then he like forced and ran up to to like just you know um, get its HP lower or whatever. Um, right. This CS is not going to go anywhere, or this creep is not going to go anywhere. Like, it, it's not going to just die while you're away. Like, I mean, I guess your catapult could kill it if they don't if they don't kill it in time. But there's like no way in this case. Um, if you just wait, the the creep will come to you. It's not. It wasn't below half before you hit Got it. it. So there's no reason to force it there. Yeah, this invoker is like so scared of you for whatever reason. He should just like punish you really hard here. Okay. So he should be hitting you this whole time. Should be moving up, you know, towards the right. Um, and attack moving with you. <laughs> he misses sun strike too. Okay. Yeah, so this guy's struggling for sure. Um, but you are as well. Okay. So we are getting pretty low on regen here. Alright. Well, that was surprisingly good on his part. I'm actually very shocked that he did that. Um, he, he actually might have lived if he fairy fired or, or sticked, but either way, okay. So let's, let's look. So this is actually a pretty well-timed gank, because um, you're getting low on regen, and Evoker is like taking control of the lane, really. So how could you have executed this better? Your movements were like a little bit erratic. Um, I'm not Again, sure. Again, I don't want to spook normally, so I try to, because if I just start charging... You, you oh no, this is, this is totally fine. This this right here is fine. Um, well, okay, so 
the backwards movement is a little weird. Um, it basically, when you run back like this, it gives him more time to react if you run forward, right? Oh, okay. So yeah, like, just staying here would have been totally fine. Alright. Okay, but um, I was talking about your movements right here. It looks like you like ran around the side of the trees. Um, you might have just like had one click where you were clicking on this side of the trees, so it tried to path you down here. Um, okay. Not much to talk about, really. Um, he does almost get away, but yeah. Um, okay, so now you're, you're at this point where you have no rage in. You just killed your lane, and you need to make a choice. You need to s decide whether or not you can actually stay here or go back to base. 100% um, it's a really easy choice in this case, you just go back. Um, basically, right now, you get the CS, and then you just run back to base. Um, don't try to push the lane, don't do anything, just like keep it still, um, and go back right away. All right. Uh, basically, what uh, the point of that is, is Invoker is going to respawn eventually. That's how Dota yeah. works. That's one of the You're consistent things. Well, no, let's just, okay, pretend it's not Invoker. Pretend it's, you know, a really, really strong range creep with no abilities. Um, when that really, really strong range creep comes back to lane, what is he going to do? When a really strong range creep comes back to lane, it's going to attack anything that's within its aggro circle, prioritizing things that are <laughs> making aggressive, whatever. Right. Other things, right? It's going to hit you, and you're, you have low HP already. So, if you stay here, you're not going to get CS later on, because the range creep is going to attack you, it's going to do a ton of damage. Um, and you're going to be zoned out eventually. Like, it, you've already, like, you've already, you're already at the point where, like, you could be zoned out right now by just a range creep. Um, you don't have any mana to fight back. So, basically, if you stay here, then you're not going to be able to fight back when the, when it gets here. And that would be bad, because then you won't get an ACS. So, what you do now is you freeze the lane, so to speak. So, okay. Let's go right here. You just killed Invoker, great. Um, you leave one of these creeps alive, and then just run, run back to base right now. That way, like, okay, um, if nobody touches the lane at that point, it'll just stay here, and creeps will fight each other forever. And it'll, it'll okay. stay around here. Um, at least, you know, long enough for you to get back. Then you come back with full HP, full mana, maybe a little bit of extra regen, um, your treads, something like that. And you'll be able to lane again, just like it's, you know, level 1 again. Okay, so that's pretty important, actually. It's important that you go back here. Um, you decide to push, which is okay as well. It's not, not that bad. Um, but you do need to go back, like, right now. <laughs> okay. okay, is Invoker just, like, not laning here anymore? No, he's running bottom. He didn't decide to go back to lane for whatever reason. So everything I just said is, like, thrown out the window because this guy is, like, doing weird shit. It's, like, running bottom or something. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but yeah, so a better player would have recognized that, like, hey, their carry has no regen, and I'm Invoker. I can go attack him, and he has to leave. But he has no with, options. Even with the Silencer sitting behind me, he's still going to think that? Well, a good player will, yeah, because like Silencer can't trade with an Invoker either. Um, the Silencer adds like complications, sure, but a Silencer with nobody else to like help him is com is nothing in compared to an Invoker, like in terms of raw damage and trading power. Um, especially if this guy was like appropriately skilled and everything, like uh, he had um, Quas Exort rather than Wegzort. Um, he had boots, those sorts of things. Um, the Silencer has no chance of trading against an Invoker with four spirits. It's like, okay, in this specific case, I still think Wexord Invoker could out-trade Silencer, but it wouldn't be nearly as mad. Um, but yeah, an Ex Exord Invoker with like this guy's levels and items would be able to dominate you guys right now, given your current HP. And mana, of course. Okay, so here you push, and then... I'm not sure what happens after that. You run back to base, now you pull. Okay. Um, so tell me what your thinking was here. Like, what were you trying to do? Uh, the first, I wanted to stack. What? Well, wait, no. Look at the time. So yeah, I think the lane was the lane was pushing. So I'm just trying to do a farming pattern. I've seen players far better than me that s say instead of static farming, if you have a free lane, you should push because you're farming faster. Right. And then I pulled so that the creeps came back, and then I tried to go hit the creeps, and then like just kind of cycle through like this. I might have done it wrong. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't very fluid, but you had the right idea. It's okay. Um, just know that, like, the result of this is going to cause the lane to push, which is okay. It's right, fine. Right. Um, but, yeah, just as long as you know that, that's okay. Um, it is good to do this because you're farming faster. You don't take that much damage. So right, that's good. Because I have, at this point, I identify I have a free lane, so I'm just trying to maximize 
everything. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if it gets tower damage off, too, that's cool. Mm. I will um, say, like, this is good. Like, uh, this is totally fine. But um, it's much more effective if you get every CS. Um, and I know that sounds really dumb and, like, not helpful, but um, I did notice, like, while we were watching, the, you know, know the lighting phase, like, there's a lot of miss CS. Yes. I miss my favorite part is when you're like super slow motion talking about something and I'm just fucking whiffing on every CS. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that, that's kind of like, uh, that's not even my intention either. Like, uh, no, I know, I know. I'm like totally it's, distracted. It's funny. Like, yeah. She, she mm -hmm. No, but that's, that's okay. Um, definitely CS practice is something that would benefit you. Um, yeah. If you play carry. Okay. Okay, so you buy Midas, awesome. So I guess that's why I went the gloves. Yes, that makes sense. Um, also, this like kind of assuages some of my uh, my grief over you not buying a farming item, which is good. Right. Wraith King is definitely one of those heroes that can't get away with just going like SMI or whatever. Um, he needs something. Okay, this guy is really dead. That's good. Yeah, so there's. Yeah, I don't have any issues with this. He was just out of position. You pressed your buttons and rounded him. That was good. That's all you needed to do there. So here you definitely want to push right away. Um, okay, so Rubik's here, so that changes. But um, in the case where a support wouldn't come and take this lane, um, you want to push right after getting a kill on your lane opponent. Basically, like if you push right now, he's going to miss all of this XP. Right. And that is good. Okay. Okay, pick up your treads, awesome. Um, this is good, I like that you're kiting the creeps. Awesome. Okay, so who walks up here? Was it just Rubik? It was Rubik and Invoker. Okay, good. You're act appropriately here. Also a nice global. Okay, definitely, like, when there's an active threat in your lane, um, wh while you're just like killing neutrals, you want to like flick your camera over and just check to see what spells they use, um, see where they're running. Those things are important. Okay. Also, Invoker just came back to lane, so you want to check his items again to see if he has anything big. Right. That's. Okay. See, you go fast, and I hit all the I hit all the CS. You go slow <laughs> with for days. Maybe that's actually my subconscious. Like, I'm not actually, like, thinking about it, but maybe I'm just, like, you know, honing in on it subconsciously. Well, no, because I told you I'm a 1.9k player, so subconsciously mm. you're like, oh, okay, well, let's make sure that he looks like a 1.9k <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my job, after all. It's not to make people better, just make them yeah, feel bad yeah. about themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Alright. So what... Okay, stop. Hold on for a second. Sure. How can I be farming this shit more effectively, right? Like, how can I be maximizing my time in the lane right now? I notice, all right, so the creep waves are all pushed. Like, yep. is this is this just what I'm supposed to be doing right now? Should kill a catapult. Okay. That's a lot of gold. Um, okay, so how you would maximize it is you cut all of the trees down over time, and you cut all these trees down over time, and then you run, like, you just do the, the loop, basically. Um, cool. So here you just push this. You'd be killing the catapult right now. You yeah. run through here, eat this tree, um, eat any one of these trees, really, um, run through. You don't miss any time like this. Like, this time you're spending right now um, wouldn't right. be there. You would know what you're doing right away. Right. Um, so that's a, a way to maximize it. Um, you don't run around this way. You just sit and hit this creep. Um, I you miss some DPS up. there. I intended to not have this block, but mm -hmm. it's all ass backwards. Oh, did you place this word? Oh, no. I, no, I didn't place oh, okay. that word. I'm just saying the, the large creep, I thought it would follow me out and that camp would stack, but it Oh, okay, that was your plan. Okay, so let's see what happened then. I just, somehow I messed it up. I guess, so I thought he's going to follow me here, right? Mm. This goes back. Yeah, so basically, like, you stack this camp at 53 if the creeps are in their normal position, but right. um, when they're, like, fighting you actively, um, and, like, when they cross a certain distance, um, in this case, I guess it's, like, this short, um, the creeps will start to reset. So you need to account for that when you're when you're doing these sorts of things. Um, in this case, I don't know if you could have done that necessarily, um, because you started attacking it at like 10.53, but if you did want to sack it, the best way to go about doing that would be to pull it this way, just briefly, okay. and then run up. Um, that would be pretty good. 
So should I be, I mean, should I be concerned with like side pulling here and all this stuff or just let it push? Um, I believe it, just letting it push would be okay. Like, so in a normal, in a normal world, this camp would already be dead because you wouldn't have wasted so much time like walking around. Then you could go just push. Okay. Um, but let's look at the timing and actually like see what's going on here. So here you are pushing. This is totally fine. Normal stuff. Right now you'd be killing the catapults. Again, totally fine, normal stuff. This creep wave is running in. So this creep wave would die under tower, under their tower. And then right. this one would push out. So you wouldn't have to like um like choose between doing this camp or doing um or killing the creeps in the lane. Okay, so right now you just now start doing this camp, which is like, you know, about five seconds too late. And it also takes you a little bit of extra time because you do this like run around thing. Um whether it's just like input errors or whatever. Um, okay, so also because you didn't kill the catapults, your creeps are not all dying under tower. Like these range creeps are not going to get hit by the tower, right? Uh. So that that actually like screws things up a little bit. Um, so these creeps are going to not only kill some of their creeps, but also like um, like cause these creeps to stand still under for a little bit. Right. And yeah, okay. then it's going to be frozen pretty much right under the tower. Um, small, small uh, yeah, pretty pretty much. Um, it eventually does go under tower, and Evoker starts pushing, so that's good. But um, let's go back to what you were doing there in this. Um, in this case, because you're Wraith King, it would be better for you to like, um, like just do basically push this and then go to the large camp and then do that and then go back to lane. That's usually how the time is, is going to work out. Um, but really, you have to do it based off feel. Um, like if you feel like you can get the small camp in time and or get to the small camp, do that in time and then run back to lane right away, then by all means do it. But I don't think Wraith King has the timing to do that. You know, compared to a Juggernaut or Anti Mage kind of hero. Right. Um, if you do want to do that, then you definitely want to cut these trees down, like um, cut a path through here, just so you can save some time. Okay, cool. That's a good. Yeah, I've seen people do that, but I don't ever do it myself. Yeah, one of the things you can just do as carry is like mess with your cloning blade a little bit more and try to find paths. Like it's especially good in um, in radiant jungle, like especially with the small camp. Like you can cut this tree, this tree. Um, you can cut this tree to get through. Run this way. Um, there are just so many little ways to make yourself more efficient in the jungle with uh, Clanging Blade. Cool. Alright, you gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. I believe you just got EMP'd, which sucks. Yeah, it does. I tried to run, but... Yeah. Not much you can do, other than just try to dodge it. Um, sounds are uses global, okay. Here you go back to the base. So okay. there's a sniper, there's at least two in my lane, and I I know I want to keep farming, because if I just mm. go back to base, I'm not getting any, you know, XP or gold, and I have my um, vampiric aura, so I, you know, I can, sus you know, I can sustain doing this. So your thinking is not bad, like, you do want to keep farming, but you need to think about, like, how having full HP and full mana makes you farm faster, or, like, farm more reliably. Um, I think my goal is, I think I do end up going back, but I just want to, like, take camps on the way back. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, that's that's good, and that's actually what I was going to get towards. Um, basically, your path in this case, because you have a Midas coming up, is you should do this camp first, then go here, and then go here, kill the small ones, and then Midas the big one. That's oh, okay. how the timing will work out in this case. Because um, now yeah. you're just like, you kill the medium camp, which is fine, that's what you're supposed to do, but right. then you go back, and now your Midas is off cooldown. Um, right. So you're spending a little bit of time. But it's really important that like you keep yourself full mana, or like um, relatively full mana with a TP and full HP, because um, then you're like less vulnerable to harass. You're able to TP to lanes to fight and get gold. Um, you just have more options if you have those uh, if you have mana and HP. Like you don't have to give up farm because it's unsafe if you're full mana full HP in most cases, or not as often as you would if you were low HP and low mana. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's talk about this. This is actually good because Silencer is farming the lane and he needs some XP. Um, on your way by here, you should cut this tree just because that's going to be where you're going next. Oh, okay. Um, so that's one thing you can do. You might have spit creep, totally fine. I don't cut trees at all, so I'll, I'll definitely work on that. Yeah, I definitely want to. Okay, so this is incorrect. Um, there are very few situations where you would like make cross-country treks like this just to take farm from another person. 
Um, I know that's that's not your intent. You weren't like just like oh, there's fucking silence or noob taking my farm. I know you were no, like no, that. No, no, I wasn't that. I was just thinking, okay, push the wave, rotate to jump. We'll push the wave, rotate to jump. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, but in this case, silencer is already pushing the lane, right? So yeah, rather than doing this, you could actually just like clear the jungle up. So like do an, an upwards clear like this, and then meet the next creep wave. Um, by then, silencer will have gotten plenty of farm. The wave's already at tower. That's totally fine. He gets a ton of solo XP as well. Um, right. This is just like distribution of farm kind of thing. Um, there's, okay. Somebody is already farming this lane, so there's no point for you to like rush getting here. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. this looks good. Cause I want to kill that guy. Okay. That's fine. Uh, it was a little bit late because you lost the tower. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think I wanted to. I, I think I wanted to make sure that like this this problem happens in like the sub two K bracket all the time. I mm. call it the Mexican standoff. <laughs> yeah, I know. I Everyone's know exactly just where you're going. Around. And so uh, before I TP, I try to make sure that like so. See, right now this invoker super committed. I'm going in. Right. But like normally, if they're not that far up, then I'm just not going to waste my time because yeah happen. that's totally correct um i do think if you tp it a little bit sooner medusa might have gone off the tower but that's like kind of iffy you don't really know um basically like this is just one of those things where um sometimes tping at wrong times is good and bad game or in good in games um in this case like i don't think you would normally tp um they still have like defensive abilities with dazzle um, dazzle doesn't even grave this guy like, there's a lot that's going wrong here. Um, and more importantly, the tower is pretty much already dead. Even if, like, Medusa doesn't go on it. It's already dead right. before you get here. So, like, yes, you get the kill, which is fantastic. That's awesome. It's great that you rotated. But it doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. Because, like, you're giving up this farm um, and this tower for, like, this tower, basically. Um, or actually, no, you're not even giving that up. Like, uh, you're not giving up this for that. It's like you're losing this tower... And you're also losing this tower. Like, that's a good way to look at it, right? But, so part of the other problem is I don't want... I feel like we have an advantage, and I don't want my team having to fight 4v5 at this point, mm -hmm. especially on the heels of that. And I know, like, okay, so my ult's up, reincarnate, all this. I just kind of think, now that they're relatively weak, if I'm pushing the issue, even if I get killed and reincarnate, mm -hmm. that'll be favorable. Just because of, at our bracket, like... People just like the only way is forward. Like that's the mindset. Like there is no. Well, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. So I do think pushing this lane would have been better in this case rather than going okay. for the invoker kill. Okay, um, you got it. Maybe if like their whole team was diving the tower, then maybe you go in because then you have like more kills afterward. But because right. it was just the invoker that was isolating himself and being stupid, um, that's kind of hard right. to justify going in. Because um, here you lose a tower. Like objectively, you lost a tower um, okay. that you could have gone for. Like, this thing would have been dead, for sure. You had a huge creep wave and stuff. But, yeah, let's let's watch and see, like, what happens down here. Okay, so your Midas is coming up. You also have your Blink on the way, which is nice. Um, I will say... I'm so not, like... I'm not super crazy about going for, um... Going for a Midas into Blink. Um, it's not bad. Um, my problem is that you don't, like, have any combat stats with it. Right. But it's okay. It's not the worst. Um, maybe something like Midas into Armlet, or like Armlet into Blink, or something like that is better. Um, but either way, what were you going to say? I don't remember. I do do Armlet sometimes, but I, I don't know why I decided not to in this game. It's a tough item to use, to be honest. Um, it can be pretty challenging. But I do think it would be good this game. Okay. Is, yep, awesome. Okay, next and I'm, I'm cool to reincarnate here. I'm not concerned. So I'm just going like, now I'm doing the only ways forward. Sort mm -hmm. of That's fine. You do have to like take into account that they have EMP. Um, I don't know where their invoker is right now. Um, He's not there. Yeah, but you didn't know that, right? That is correct. I did not. Yeah, so you had no way of knowing. So that's like my only problem with this play is you kind of did blink into fog. Um, Invoker could have just like EMP'd right on top of Sniper and you just kind of die at that point. 
Right. Okay. Um, so that's like my only problem with this play, but it's still fine. Like it's whatever. Um, you would have plenty of time to react to that. Like, if uh, if you get EMP'd right now, you just back up. You don't go for the sniper kill. Right. Okay, so here you're just fighting. You know you're going to get reincarnated off. Great. And now I just want to kill the Medusa if I can. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, Shallow Grave. Good spell. Okay. So let's look at everything that's going on here, because there's some crazy stuff. This is this is my life, man. This is all it is. Yeah, it's, this is pretty wild. Stuff. This is why I like advocate farming <laughs> so much because you don't have to deal with like all this craziness that's happening. So let's my just look at part you. two is the Hillary for prison at the bottom, like shit talking the whole time. I mean, it's, it's a wild <laughs> no. man. Yeah, he even like why does he have knives in his name with like the weird weird font? I, I, yeah. That's just, maybe he's part of the crew. Interesting, interesting yeah. group of people. Yeah. Dota players are, but yeah, okay. I, fuck, I hit jump ahead. Alright. I hate this button so much. This is like the most useless button ever. And it, it just like fucks me over so many times. Or I fuck myself with it anyway. Um, okay. So let's... I don't even know what time that was, but it's way after this. Yeah, this okay, is I hear it. Yeah, this is fun. Alright. So, you blink on top of Sniper, stun him. Stun I'm sure away because I was about to get stoned from the right. Medusa. That's good. So you res out of tower range after this. Um, Rubik appears. Honestly, instead of going for the Medusa, I would blink on Rubik and kill him. Um, basically, like, Medusa is one of those heroes that's, like, deceptively tanky because of mana shields, right. and Rubik is not. <laughs> he is not deceptively tanky at all. Um, right. in any way. Except for maybe, like, the magic resist thing. But, um, you can blink on Invoker and stun him and attack him and he'll die. Like, instantly. It doesn't matter what he does. Or, er, blink but, on the Rubik, I mean rather. I have teammates in his area, right? Right. But so, your teammates are 1.9k players. No, that's 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 true, but this is sort of my... My main concern is, I know, because it's a 1.9k game, it's going to 55, 70 minutes, mm -hmm. and there's a Medusa. And I just need to do everything I can to, like, slow her down or whatever, because I know we're not ending early. We never end early. No one, no one does. Right. So this is one thing. Is like, yes, you need to kill the Medusa and you need to slow her down or whatever. But sometimes the best way to do that is to like. Okay. So here, I'm gonna make an analogy here. That's gonna be shitty, but it's gonna work. Um, okay. So let's say you're attacking a castle, and you're attacking right. a castle because there's like a really valuable treasure room or something inside, or there's a crystal inside. Um, okay. That crystal is a Medusa. Okay. Right. So when you attack the castle, do you like? try to, um, I don't know, fucking fly over it and, like, dive into the treasure room head first, or do you, like, take out the outer walls? All or, right. like, uh, trebuchet the outer walls, or, like, siege a door, or, like, do something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, like, yes, maybe if you're really fucking insane, you can just go straight for the treasure room, but I don't know how to do that in a lot of cases. In this case, it's, like, pretty simple. Like, it's, they don't have the best, you know, structure. Um, they didn't have the greatest architect building this castle. Um, blah, 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 whatever. But... Yeah, that's kind of my point. It's like, in this case, like, because Medusa is going to live long enough for you to, like, or for her to just, like, run in here and, like, stall you even more, um, it's right. better to just go and finish the kill on Rubik really quickly, and then you can chase Medusa afterward. Like, if also, if you're, like, really next level, you can just click on her, see she has no TP. Um, as soon as she's here, like, running into tower, you can just switch, or, like, not use your sun when you res and go for Rubik. Um, once she's here, she's not going anywhere. Like, right. the best thing she could do right now is, like, run this way and like try to get to this corner or something or like go up river um one of those things but like she's not going to do that in most cases so basically like long story short is um she can run away from you because she has phase and because she's tankier than rubik but rubik will die in like two hits so just kill him really quick um, okay and also rubik is a priority target because he has cc and he can get more cc with a uh, spell steal and cc will prevent you from killing medusa okay good point okay Cool. So anyway, this ends up working out. Um, Medusa dies. Awesome. Rubik dies. Awesome. Looks like you guys end up getting the tower as well. And Hillary for prison. I don't know TP why. Is in two tower. Back. I think he actually died earlier. Yeah, no, he died twice in this fight. That was very impressive display. He's determined to feed. Yeah. It doesn't matter in the end. We still lose, but mm -hmm. it, it was a nice gesture. <laughs> it was. Okay.
Uh, that's good, he might have some big creep. Um, what, uh, what's going on here? What's your, like, what is going through your head right now? Um, so, I notice mid waves pushing, being a Wraith King, I know I need a bunch of farm, and I think someone, did I ping it? Or someone, someone's pinging it right mm. now. Maybe I'm trying to do something, because you can't see what the team's saying, right? Uh, no, uh, you can only see all chat. Right, so I don't know, I assume we'll find out. But anyways, I, I see farm, and I see the it's pushing, and maybe just one hero. I don't know, to be honest. Okay, that's fine. Um, so first problem is you don't have a TP, so you can't get here quickly, just in case. Okay. I mean, you can't get out. Um, okay. My problem with this is, like, you are giving up farm in this area, which, like, right. yes, admittedly, it's a little bit unsafe compared to, you know, the farm in mid, but right. you're running past all of this farm to get to farm here. It's just a bit silly, right? Like you okay. have a you have a pretty clear pattern you can do here, or at least like it's clear to me. Um, you can go small camp, large camp, use your Midas somewhere in between there, then go maybe ancients or skip ancients and go to this camp, and then by then, since this wave is pushing in, this will be at tower by then, right? right? Or something similar to that. Maybe you adjust based on like how fast this wave is pushing if somebody pushes out or, it out or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically like. You don't want to run past all this farm to get to farm in another place, really. Um, okay. If you're doing that, you might as well just TP. Got it. And save yourself some time. Okay. Okay, so it looks like... Yeah, you don't really have much to do here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what went down. Um, I think Rubik just like walks up to you. He steals stun. Okay, that's big. Um, not much you can do about that, that's just what Rubik does to Wraith King. Um, just know that, like, he has two stuns now, so you need to respect that. Um, he actually might be able to solo you here. Okay, well, either way, it's whatever. Um, basically, like, after Rubik steals stun, you just kind of have to respect the fact that he can, like, he can stun you for, you know, that amount of time. I think it's 1.5 seconds, 2 seconds for this, and then... Lift is 2.25. Okay, so he can stun you for 4.25 seconds um, once he gets Wraith Fire Blast. So just be mindful of that. Um, you don't have your ult right now, so yeah. <clears throat> I guess this, um, more importantly, like, rather than going into the specifics of, like, how long Rubik can stun you for or whatever when he steals your spell, um, just know that, like, because there are people missing on the map right now, um, you need to be ready to react to somebody walking up and stunning you. And in this case, you were not, um, for whatever reason. Um, the same thing could have happened if, like, Medusa Mystic Snaked instead of Sniper Assassinating. Um, if Invoker was alive, he could have just, like, right-clicked you or Sunstriked. Um, Dazzle actually probably could have heal-bombed you, too. That would have been, like, similar. Um, yeah, they had a lot of ways to kill you, they just needed some kind of initiation. So when they're all off the map like that, what, am I just supposed to chill in the jungle? The... No, you just play carefully. Well, in this case, like, you had plenty of vision, so you were safe here, but you just let Rubik walk up to you, is oh. the thing. It's like, watch. Yeah, so Rubik is, like, walking up. You're not moving. No, I was. I saw the range creep, and I just wasn't concerned. Yeah, it, it's just like you didn't respect him, really. You knew he was there. Um, right. and you, you, didn't, you knew he was there, and you didn't even, like, properly gather information. If you were, like, really on the ball, and you were, like, looking around and, like, paying attention to your minimap and checking to see who was showing up, you would know he's here right now. Right. No, I didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So you had plenty of time to react, and you weren't even like playing like, you know, really properly. So that's, in this case, it's just a matter of like respecting your opponent. Um, yeah. Okay. So you end up dying. That sucks. All good though. Um, luckily, there's like a pretty sizable amount of farm bottom that you might be able to get. Okay. You don't have TPing. Cool. In this case, it would be better to just Midas um, the catapult. Yeah, I so believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, definitely go push the lane as well. Okay, you do have your ult, which is great, but like you don't, you don't know how this is gonna go down. Like you don't know where these guys are gonna move. Um, you want to push this lane before you fight. Okay. So your pattern here should have been Midas and wave or Midas on the wave, and then push this, at least, you know, to, like, around here, so get this next creep wave as well. Then you can go towards mid, because then, like, when you add this 
certainty into the game, or like this like um, the stability into like your lanes, and you push this out, you know with almost 100% certainty that somebody is going to come here eventually and push this. Right. People That's... like to farm. Whereas like you don't know if you just run from here to here, you don't know exactly what they're going to do, um, or you know you have a much lower chance of predicting what they're going to do because it's like less predictable you, you don't know exactly what they're going to do it's it, somebody is not going to just run down here or it's unlikely that somebody is going to run down here and just push this um maybe they just group up and do nothing and you know push away or whatever um maybe they go jungle maybe they decide to go top and get map control or something like that obviously it, it's 1.9k so maybe that's unrealistic but um you get what i mean yeah like the pushing part is a lot about farming and a lot about getting xp and out farming your opponents but it's also a lot about like maintaining consistency and like trying to establish certain patterns in games like uh people split pushing and like how that forces rotations and then how that transitions into like initiation timings and things of that nature you know what i mean yeah i do okay so that's like a big part of the style that i teach um okay so okay, let's I have, this way. okay. so hang on i have a question so oh, yeah, i have i have you for how long do i have you for um like Four more minutes, I think? You booked one hour, right? Yeah. Are okay. you doing anything after this? Can I just book another hour right now? Uh, I can't, unfortunately. I have team coaching after this. Uh, Alright. I'll get you some other time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sh I, sh I will not say this on the recording, actually. But, um... Okay, in that case, do you want to just, like, wrap up? Do you have any, like, general questions about Dota? Anything like that? No. Um, so what... But I do want to, like, reconfirm and go back over my, like, big picture takeaways that I'm doing here. So, obviously, the erratic movements are bad. Uh, some little some little nuances in, like, stun, right-click immediately after, some positioning stuff. Um, farming patterns a little bit. I'm going to work on chopping down trees mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay, uh, so... Some other big ones I was supposed to take away. Those are all the big ones, honestly. Your items were, like, fine. They were totally acceptable. Um, okay. I wouldn't have gone BKB in this. Oh, no, you kind of have to, because of um, they have an Exord Invoker, or Wex Invoker, but um, yeah, items were fine. Um, really, the biggest things in this game were, like, CSing, farming patterns, and the most important one was the positioning and lane thing. Um, basically, laning, the laning phase affects everything in the game. Of course, you know, CS... Uh, you get laning phase in this, or CS in laning phase, and that affects you for the rest of the game, depending on how much you get. Right. Um, but really, what it's important to become a good laner or improve your laning skills rather, because like that means you're also getting better at team fighting in a way, and it means you're also getting better at split pushing. Because the laning phase is like, um, it's like all of the lessons that you learn in a game of Dota are concentrated in the laning phase. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. So that's why it's important. Um, basically, like, so your your problem specifically was you didn't um, play as if Invoker was a range hero for whatever reason. Um, like specifically at the beginning when he was just like not attacking you. Um, just because he's not attacking you, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't you should position as if he's not attacking you or if he's a melee hero or whatever. Um, right. You should still like act like he's going to. Um, obviously, like, okay, if this guy never learns and he never attacks you once, then by all means do whatever you want. Um, but just Try to adjust. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so I guess what things I'll want to go over in subsequent sessions are pushing, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like, as you'll kind of see, like, we just refuse to push. Like, the team just won't push. I don't know how to push on my own with no vision. I can't see anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing, uh, I guess I'll get you again for a mid, just where we could go over maybe, like, the first ten minutes of a bunch of games, just kind of like, uh, sure, do that. So, does, does that sound like two hours worth of stuff, or how long should I book for that? Um, let's do one hour book bookings at a time. Um, I don't have the best health, so I can't really do one hour, you know, back to back usually, or two hours back to back usually. Oh. Okay. Um, but, um, so let's do with that for now. Um, yeah. but either way, um, to help with like your pushing thing, um, just like if you push. If you start off by pushing once, like pushing out a lane out to like around here once, that will make every subsequent push easier because like you get information from this. So okay. 
somebody will go here, and that opens up bottom lane or middle lane. Then somebody will go to that lane, that opens up you know another lane at that point. It's so, like it's kind of like a, there's a flow to it. Um, obviously, dying disrupts that because um, like that messes with the timing and everything. But yeah, uh, that's like the best tip I can give for pushing or whatever. Just do it once and try to live, and then extract the information from that. Okay. Okay. So um, if you think of any other questions, feel free to send them my way on Skype. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll just book another one though. This is very reasonable with your current um, promotion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not totally sure here. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, I'm not.